Okay, in this lesson, we're going to talk about 10 general principles for securing sensitive resources. The first one, I love this one, it's not really practical for the rest of your life, but for sensitive resources, it's excellent. And this one is trust no one, <laughs> okay? When it comes to sensitive resources, trust no one, okay? And this is gonna be basically strict oversight of all of our controls, the categories of controls, okay? Administrative, technical, physical, and the types of controls, preventative, for example, uh, corrective, all those that we have there. So first off, trust no one. Secondly, the second principle is also extremely important. And this is the least privilege principle. I'm just gonna put P-R-I-V. This is making sure that your subjects, and you know, users and systems and applications only have the access and the authorization to do things to the objects they come in contact with that they need to do their job or to accomplish their tasks. No more, okay? And the least privileged principle means if you have to escalate privileges for a user, for example, uh, to give a user escalated privileges, that needs to be done through some type of system, through some type of configuration management system, and it needs to go through a ticket based, you know, possibly a service desk. So there needs to be a process in place on an ad hoc basis or an as needed basis to escalate privileges. And at all other times, least privilege. It also means, you know, staying within your pay grade. If we're using mandatory access controls or role-based access controls or attribute based access controls, depending upon your context, the characteristics, okay, the, the identity context at the time, right? What, what device are you using? Where are you using it from? Wired or wireless or VPN? What time of day are you using it? What's the, what's the posture of that device? And what is your role at the time of using that device, okay? Least privilege. The next one is what we call job rotation. And at Brio, we make sure that we do job rotation with certain departments, like our controller uh, in the accounting department, uh, the people that are involved with data loss prevention, okay? Those key individuals, auditors, we'll make sure that we kind of rotate them out of their jobs and their job roles maybe every six to 12 months, okay? That's gonna prevent any one person or persons from having total control <clears throat> or total ongoing access to an application or a system. It'll also help you to reduce crime and to reduce any type of collusion or theft and things like that. So job rotation is also important. Something that's kind of closely tied to job rotation is mandatory vacations, okay? This is obviously good just for morale, right? And relieving stress and getting energy back into your job. But mandatory vacations, is also important because it goes back to that preventing of a single person to be 24 seven in control of a system or an application or a service. By going on vacation for one week or two weeks or whatever, we're bringing somebody into that job role and while they're gone, often we'll do auditing, okay? Uh, some security auditing or pen testing on the system that they've been dealing with. Obviously looking for any inconsistencies or any evidence of some type of malfeasance or crime. And then we have number five, separation of duties, okay? Separation or segmentation of duties. And this is taking certain activities, certain functions and dividing them up where you have one or more people involved. So for example, you might have uh, one individual who's doing your backups, okay? And another individual who's doing the restoration. Okay, so the person who does backups can't restore data or transactions, and the person who does restoration cannot do backups. It also kind of comes into that, that concept where, let's say if somebody writes a check for more than, let's say, $1,000, okay? If there's a $1,000 check, then you need to have two signatures, okay? Signature one and signature two. I've also seen this used in environments where, and this is kind of, kind of, uh, seems extreme, but on certain systems and in certain applications, you may have a password that let's say it is 26 char characters. It's a, it's, a, it's a long, strong, extreme 
26 character password and one individual will input the first 13 characters and then step away and the other individual will come in and put in the last 13 characters and step away. Okay, so trust no one, least privileged principle, job rotation, mandatory vacation, and separation or segmentation of duties. That's the first five. Let's take a look now at the six through 10 general principles.